Hey everyone out there, I've done this video here for you who want to have the witness card or who have just got the witness card. I want to show you how you can use it. The gospel is the same as we often do in the other videos where we just use the cups and something else to illustrate the gospel. But now we have these cards. If you have a set here, we have got, first I want to say thank you to a guy called David from Canada because he has seen me share the gospel with the cups and cookies and he got inspired by that and he did some cards. And because of these cards he did, I got inspired, inspired by that to think, hey, can we do it even more and illustrate even more? So I took his cards and then I added five, six cards to it and change a little to do what to make what we have now. This is witness cards, uh, and uh, it's just normal cards with a lot of pictures on. When you open the pack, you have three cards in the beginning. That is without numbers on. That is the first three cards. The next cards you have, there is a little number in the corner: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to thirteen. What is good with a little number in the, in the, there is when you mix it all together, it's easy to put it in the right order so you know exactly where to start. Uh, so it makes it much easier. The first three cards is to, uh, to have so you can show a little that there is an online pioneer school, there is a TLR map and there is cards or there you can find people near you and how it works and we have the three movies. So the first card is a little commercial you can use if you want. You can also just put the cards on the other way, then we have the chess game. And the next three cards we have here is also the chess game, just the other uh, colors of the chess game. What is important with the chess game is that we want to illustrate for people that, that God has done everything he needs to do, now it's up to man to repent. I met many people who are waiting for God to come and do something, but God has already paid the price. He paid his son. Now it's them that need to move. So I often use it like this. Uh, it's like playing chess. You move, I move. You move, I move. You move, I move. But am I allowed to suddenly do this and move three times? No, I'm not. Why? Because there's rules and I need to keep the rules. The same way it is with man, that man have sinned, and that was a bad move. God, he then sent his son Jesus to die for man's sin. Which turn is this now? Is your turn? Is that person who sit opposite you? Is that person's turn to move right now? God is saying, move, move, move. He's ready to forgive people. He's ready to save. He is not keeping back. He has already paid the price, his son Jesus Christ. He is ready to move, but it's up to us to move. As soon as man move, then God will move. But how can man move if they don't know it's their turn to move? How can man move if they don't know the rules and what to do? And this is what we want to do in this, with these cards. We want to show people what they need to do so God is doing what he wants to do. So we show people how they need to repent so God can forgive them, how they need to get baptized so God can wash them free, how they need the Holy Spirit so we can lay hands on them and all of that. So this is the idea with the chess game. And I would say with these cards, when you have it, just practice. Sit and practice how to use it. So the chess game, if we turn around, on the other side we have the card illustrating God and then we have the tree of life and the tree of knowledge, good and evil. The reason we make the tree of knowledge, good and evil so good to look at is because it was good to look at. It was deceiving Adam and Eve because it was good to look at. May, and then in the garden God put man, card number one. Man was supposed to eat of the tree of life and live forever, but the story was they took off the wrong tree, and when they did that, sin came in. They changed. The difference here is, is light, fellowship with God, darkness, a stony heart. 
So the way I often illustrate it is say, in the beginning of the garden, man walked with God, man had fellowship with God, and everything was good, and they should eat of the tree of life and live forever. But instead, they took off the tree of knowledge, good and evil, and everything changed. God now said, if man eat of the tree of life now, they will live forever, and then we will always have a problem with sin. And because God, because of people's sin, don't want people to live forever, he threw them out of the garden, and he sent angels <laughs> to keep them away from the garden and away from the tree of life. So now we have a world that was very different from the world God created, a world where people was not without sin, with a soft heart, walking with God, but where people had a stony heart, in sin, divided from God. Then we have four more cards like this, where we can say man then got kids who killed each other, who got kids who rebelled, and rebellious happened, and sin came into the world. I often use the illustrate of Noah, that God then find Noah and destroyed the rest, but as soon as Noah came out of the boat, we have problem one more time. You don't have to, it depends on how much time you have if you go into the death with that. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't do it, it depends on how much time I have. But what I often do is when we talk about sin, the problem with sin is that we are all now in a fallen world and people compare themselves to each other. Instead of, we have this one, one card, instead of how it was before sin came in. So we compare ourselves with each other and we become like a blind lead a blind. And there, take good time to talk about sin. Uh, you can go to Matthew, you can talk about that Jesus said, if you have hate in your heart, you are murder. If you look with lust on somebody, you are already committing idolatry in your heart. We have all falls short of the glory of God. Every man has sinned and how the conscience has been destroyed because of sin. And I can use a symbol first. When I was younger, I stole a bicycle, I felt bad. Next time I stole a bicycle, I felt less bad. And less, next time I felt even less. Why? Because my heart became harder and harder and harder. So take a lot of time to talk about sin and how sin is the problem. Sin is dividing us from God. And I have other videos like the Reiki Healer Meet God where you can see how I share the gospel just with cups and cookies, but I talk about sin and what sin is. So take time to talk about sin, to get people to understand the problem. What is the solution then? That is the next, next card, that is Jesus Christ. So there we talk about that God could destroy all mankind and still be good, still be loving, still be righteous, but he did something instead. He sent his son Jesus to die for our sin. And now Jesus came down here and then illustrate how he walked around here, but where we have sinned, he did not sin. When he was around 30 years old, he got baptized. And we have a card here with, who illustrate the baptism where we put like water here. Oh. And then we say that Jesus came down in the water and he came up again. And then the Holy Spirit came over him. And there we can use like the Holy Spirit came over him as a dove. And when we turn the card around, you can see here that when we turn the card around, on the other side there is a dove that symbolizes the Holy Spirit. From that moment on, then Jesus was walking here around and then you can tell about how he walked around and healing the sick and casting out demons and how he was proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and how he was telling people how they should re repent, turn away from their sins, how they need to be born again out of water and spirit. So use that to illustrate the gospel. Jesus then, as the only one without sin, he died on a cross and he got buried, he went down. And then we have the next card, so he went down and then you take the next card instead. He came down and then he rose up again. If he had sinned like you and me and done what we have done, he had been in sin. But because he was the only one without sin, he rose up again. And there we have the, still with the Holy Spirit, but the crown uh, of thorn over him. To illustrate that Jesus was the slain one, he died on the cross, he rose up again. And there he went to heaven as king. 
and he sent his Holy Spirit down here. What do we now need to do? We made us divided from God because of our sins. Jesus died on a cross to forgive us. So now we need to repent, turn away from our sins toward God, put our faith in Christ. And there, repentance is to turn around. Here now you have a stony heart, you turn around. And when you turn around, the thing that happened first is that you get a new heart. You get a heart of flesh. The conscience become new. Um, people who have turned around, they stop lying, they stop t stealing, they stop blaspheming God. The first thing that often changes for people is, is the words that came out of the mouth. Of, oh, why do I speak so bad? The conscience is now alive. The conscience has been destroyed and the heart that had been stoned had become new. So something new has started, but it's not enough. Because the body is dead. What do you do with a dead body, with a dirty body? You need to wash it clean. And that is where baptism water come in. And then tell about baptism water, then it's not just a symbol, it's not just a cleaning of the outward dirt, but it's a good conscience toward God, that the water that now washes us clean, save us from our sins, and Romans chapter 6. Take good time to explain what baptism water is. That is not just a symbol, what the Bible says about baptism. And then you have the cards in your hand, and then you take this card down so you are baptized with Christ. You go down, and then you take the new card up. So you die with Christ, and then you rise up with Christ. So now you have not only got a new heart, now you only also was clean. So you are not dirty anymore. You are clean, like Adam and Eve was clean before sin came and changed everything. So talk about that, but that is not enough. Like Jesus needed to receive the Holy Spirit, you and me all need to receive the Holy Spirit. And then we illustrated that like the Holy Spirit came over Jesus, the Holy Spirit came over us, and then we turn this card around. On the other side, we now see, here we see a man with a new heart, but here we see a man with power, and the Holy Spirit symbolized as a dove over him. So now as Jesus was sent here on earth, now we are sent here on earth. So now it's us who are walking here as a new creation, born again, repented, born again out of water, Holy Spirit, walking around here, preaching gospel and healing the sick. Other people hear the same message, repent toward God, get a new heart, get baptized to Jesus, rise up again and receive the Holy Spirit. And like that, the kingdom of God is growing. Then say that very soon, God is going to come back and judge the world, or Jesus is going to come and judge the world in his righteousness. He's going to div divide the sheep from the goats. And there in the New Jerusalem, you read about that in the last book of Revelation, God is going to come down, and in the middle of the garden, we will have the tree of life, and we will be able to take out the tree of life. Those who have washed them clean is going to take out the tree of life and live forever, and one more time, everything is going to be so good, so perfect as it was in the beginning. So this is somehow really good cards to illustrate the gospel. And what I even love with this card is what you can do then. What you can then do is you can take those cards we have here and then put all those four cards up beside each other like this. And then ask people, where are you in your life right now? Are you still here where you still have a stony heart? You live in sin. You have never seen your sin. You have never turned away from sin. You have never repented. Are you here? Then you need to repent. That is the first step you need to do. You need to turn away from your sin, put your faith in Jesus and get a new heart. But maybe those people you talk with are here that you actually have repented, you have come to faith in Christ, but you have never washed away your sins. So you have started the walk, but you are still in your sins because it's not washed away yet. You need to get baptized. 
And we meet many of those people who was baptized, baptized as babies and later repented, but baby baptism is not a baptism. You have to have a repentance heart before you can get baptized. So maybe you are there or maybe you are there. If you are there and have repented, that is beautiful. You have your faith in Christ, that is beautiful. But Jesus said the one who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So you also need to get baptized to get saved from your sins in that way that you can walk a new life in Christ. So you need to get baptized in water. That is good, that is beautiful, but that is also not enough. Jesus said that it was the best for you that I go away, because if I do not go away, I could not send my Holy Spirit down here. And Jesus went away, he sent his Holy Spirit down here. And it's explained maybe out from Rome, Ella X 8 with Philip in Samaria, that you can repent, you can get baptized without receiving the Holy Spirit. So you also need to receive the Holy Spirit and walk as a disciple of Christ. So this is somehow the four stages people are on. They are in the sin, without Christ, without hope in this world right now, with a stony heart. They have repented, beautiful, but they are still walking around with their whole life. They are not baptized. Or they are baptized in water, beautiful, but they have not received the Holy Spirit. Or they have received the Holy Spirit and walk as a disciple and continue growing in Christ. And then ask people, where are you of one of those four people? Are you there, 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 or there? And if they say, I think I'm there, okay. Your next move is to do this. Or if they say, I'm there, your next move is to do this. If they say, I'm there, your next move is to do this. And then by that, illustrate them what they need to do. So this is a very, very strong tool to illustrate the gospel. And I encourage you to get the cards. Um, you can get it on our website. You can also download them if you want for free and print it out and so on. But uh, it, it costs, of course, some money to make cards like this. But we try to keep the price down. You can get one set, but if you get five set and ten set, is even cheaper. And then get the cards, use it to illustrate it, or download it, or print your own cards if you want. But it's really good to have when you are out talking with people. You will not use them out on the street like that, but if you sit in a coffee shop, if you sit at McDonald's, if you go to a home, have a card with you, take them up and illustrate and practice with them. And, um, and then when you start now, you're like, okay, now I have to start all over. Then there is the numbers, number one, number two, number three, and then you can see where, what is number four of those. This is number four here. So four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you have to set again. You put it in and you're ready to use it next time. So we are so excited and I believe many, many lives is going to get changed through those cards. Not because there is something special with the cards, but because you, hopefully, will use those cards to illustrate, to share the gospel to people around you. If the gospel is not being preached, those cards will change nothing. But if we use the cards to preach the gospel, to illustrate what Jesus did on the cross, many people need to see it. They, they need to see more than just hear it. And those cards here are really amazing tools. So God bless you. Use the cards, practice with it. If you want to know more about how to share the gospel, we have other videos also uh, we can link to where you can see how you can go even deeper in the gospel. God bless you. Bye-bye.